Well, welcome everybody. I'm Joel Morgan, the pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church, and I'm really excited to be here today with Brandy Rook. Uh, Brandy is a practice administrator for a healthcare practice here in town. She's a mom, she's a wife, and she's a woman who is in long-term recovery. And I invited her here today to just talk a little bit about what that means to her. Brandy, I'm really glad that you're here. Thanks, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so yes, my name is Brandy and um, I'm a woman in recovery. Um, I have been clean from all drugs and alcohol uh, for four and a half years. Um, I was first introduced to recovery in November of 2013. Uh, had some struggles in the beginning uh, and then you know about four and a half years ago I hit my bottom and that was enough. Uh, in those four years um, the one thing that helped me in the beginning of my recovery was definitely having the relationships with the people that also suffer from the same disease that I have. Um, being able to have that connection and someone to talk to that understands what I'm going through or understands what I went through, um, you know, also wants to be clean, also wants to be in recovery, also wants to get their kids back, also wants to have a career and be successful and a productive member of society. Um, you know, as I was going through recovery, you know, like, yes, my family is a great supporter, but they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they weren't someone that when I was struggling on a day where I, you know, felt, um, you know, anxiety or felt low or felt um, not worth it or, you know, whatever I was going through that day. And my, my mom and my dad were not the people that I would turn to and help for that. The people that I turned to were also other people in recovery. Mm -hmm. So in my early stages of recovery, I, you know, lived in a recovery house and um, I had a recovery center to go to every day where I had people just like me there people that I could run and talk to every minute of the day if I was struggling with something, um, you know, in, in a safe place. You know, I wasn't sitting at home by myself. I wasn't, um, you know, in a home with, you know, my parents and my family that, you know, didn't understand, you know, what I was going through that day. So it was super, you know, helpful to my recovery to have that in place for me because um, I needed it. I needed that, you know, closure. I needed that, you know, relationship. I needed that emotional support on a daily basis. And I, and I still, you know, need that today because, you know, recovery for me is ongoing for the rest of my life. Um, you know, so, you know, throughout my recovery process, you know, I've had a lot of gains. Um, like you said, you know, I'm a practice manager for um, a local addiction specialist here in Richmond. And um, I had a baby eight months ago. Um, you know, my daughter, I have my daughter full time as of a year ago. I, you know, I didn't have my daughter from the time she was three until she was 10, until she was about nine, 10, 10 years old. Um, she went that long without having her mom. So, you know, I have her full time now. Um, I, you know, I've gotten married in recovery. I've gained two stepsons in recovery, um, you know, buying houses, selling houses, <laughs> you know, moving, um, you know, and, and life is, you know, life is generally pretty good. You know, it, it's pretty good today. So. Yeah. Well, I know a little bit of, you know, more about your story since we, 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 we've known each other for mm -hmm. a few years and, 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 you know, what you sort of glossed over because because it's wonderful to be able to gloss over it now is what addiction took away from you. Mm -hmm. Like basically, I mean, it, it, it took your kids, it took it, it, it took your job, your profession away mm -hmm. from you for a while. It took, you know, all of those things and all of a sudden you basically have nothing mm -hmm. but yourself. Oh, yeah. And 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 so what I love now is, I mean, to really to really hear your story and to hear the process of moving back into what many would think of as the an American dream, mm -hmm. right? Because having having a family, having your children with you, being able to have a home, creating that kind of being part of a community. I just that's what I love about these 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 stories. Mm -hmm. And and of course, you know, the reason why part of the reason why we're here today is because Westminster helped with True Recovery to start a community recovery center mm -hmm. here at Westminster. And and these are the that's that's the huge reason we did that was mm -hmm. because we wanted to be part of something that was helping people um, get their lives back mm -hmm. and, and become part of the larger community again. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit more, if you would, about about the role that you think these community recovery centers play. Um, yeah, I definitely believe that they play, you know, a huge part in, um, you know, any person's recovery process um, to have those, you know, relationships and to have that support and a place to go to. Um, 
you know, I'm from West Virginia. When, you know, I started using, you know, as a ninth grader in high school. And it wasn't until I was about 25 when I, you know, was forced with a decision, you know, to get help at the time. But, you know, where I was residing, there was nowhere for me to go. Mm. There was no treatment. There was no recovery center. Um, you know, there was no meetings. There was no groups. There was no, there was none of that, you know. So, um, you know, I'm grateful that I was able to find, you know, I had to move four hours away, leave my family, you know, my daughter, everything that I'd known my entire life, you know, I, I packed up and came to Richmond, you know, in order to, you know, receive help for, you know, my addiction. And, you know, and, you know, I was placed in this recovery community organization and, um, you know, that had a place for me to go to, a safe house for me to live in. And, you know, like-minded people, you know, people that also suffered from addiction, people who also struggle in the same way that I was struggling, just trying to, you know, figure out what they needed to do to stay clean and, you know, live a productive life and get their family back and get their kids back and, you know, do what they needed to do to be a successful member of society. So it was very imperative for me to have that in my early recovery. Otherwise, you know, I'm not sure what life would look like for me today yeah. if it wasn't there you know if that place for me to go to wasn't there yeah yeah i think i think that's the that's the one thing that's been impressed upon me as i've as i've become tangentially part of the recovery community is is understanding the function that the these kinds of peer relationships have mm -hmm. on people's recovery mm -hmm. and and that as like i always say when when we get when when we get better Mm -hmm. All of us get better. Yeah. Not just not just those folks who are in the recovery community, but mm -hmm. that gets better. But then the in, the, the entire itself. culture gets better mm -hmm. because again, we don't have people we don't have people on the streets using. We don't have people doing dumb things to try to get drugs. Yeah. We don't you know all all those Stealing, things that go along like right. All those yeah. things. Mm -hmm. It's just it's yeah. just it's just such a good thing, and that's why I, I've just I've been convicted that um, for Westminster as as part of our mission, you know, as a mm -hmm. as a Church of Jesus that that. This is where mm -hmm. where we're supposed to be, and and I love that that um, that you agreed to yeah. to come today to talk to me about that a little bit. And I'd love to love to know what would you if you were gonna if you were gonna ask our community or the larger community for something for the recovery community. I would definitely ask you know encourage to you know research, um, you know to obtain a more you know understanding of what addiction is and what those individuals go through. Um, on a daily basis, clean or inactive addiction. Um, you know, I know as a, you know, a human being, you know, I'm quick to, you know, judge without having any intellectual, and you know, like any intelligence on the subject. Um, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's very helpful when you have the community um, there willing to help or willing to, you know, be more understanding of, you know, what is going on with that individual that suffers from addiction. Um, you know, the more, you know, I know for me, you know, growing up and, you know, living through active addiction, not having someone to go to or not um, feeling that, you know, I wasn't going to be, you know, shamed out, um, you know, or not going to be able to get that job, not going to be able to live in that neighborhood, not going to be able to, you know, do these things because of what people thought of me um, and the fear of reaching out for help because of the stigma of, you know, that addiction is, you know, placed out there. And part of that is, you know, because of the communities that don't, you know, want right. to, you know, see it either as a disease or not a disease or, you know, just being willing to sit down, you know, with an individual who suffers from addiction to just hear their story. I mean, if you saw me in the grocery store today and didn't know who I was, would you know that I have 13 felonies on my record? You know, would you know that I lost my kid for, you know, six years? Would you, you know, know that I spent, you know, 15 hours, you know, using opiates and drinking alcohol until I blacked out? No one knows that about me. Um, you know, so it's always great to, you know, speak out and, you know, share the experience because, I mean, where I'm at today, you know, is a testament to, you know, what recovery can do for someone. Yeah. No, I love that. I really think that gain some understanding of that because you're, you're going to find this is, and this is my opinion. Now you're going to find that guess what? 
these are people too who just want the same thing that all of us do, which is yeah. to have a life where we can where we can where we can have a place to live and we can feed ourselves yeah. and we can and we can have a family and we can have a community yeah. around us. And 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 when we're working toward that, mm -hmm. um, it's just it gives me chills when I think of the, the success stories we've had that have come out of our recovery mm -hmm. community here. Mm -hmm. um, and it breaks my heart when we have those stories where mm -hmm. someone ODs and dies. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the reality yeah. of this work is it's yeah. hard work. Mm -hmm. It takes um, a village. Yeah, it, it absolutely <laughs> it takes, takes a village. And that's, and that's what we were here <laughs> talking about today. Well, Brandy, thank you so much for being here today, for taking the time and being so raw and honest with your story and, and for giving us encouragement in, in our work here with the, with the community recovery center and just in our lives as people who encounter every day people who are struggling with addiction. Thank you. Thank you for having me.